Madre London, running back, Cologne Centurion. London, off to the races. Track me. Goodbye. London, gashing right side. Madre London breaks another tackle. Down to the 25. He's got one man to beat. It's a beast run from Madre London. He goes coast to coast. 65 yards for the touchdown. London off tackle, working the left side. Madre London down the sideline. Madre London doesn't look like anyone's going to catch him. That's a house call. Touchdown, London. Third gear for him. Ball will be spotted at the 20. So here's London again, trying to escape some trouble. And he does momentarily. Madre London on the cutback. Madre London, running back from the Cologne Centurions. Welcome and thank you very much for your time. But first of all, I have to say that you have been one of the most outstanding players throughout the whole season. Nine games played so far, over 2,000 rushing yards. What was it, 22 touchdowns and three times MVP. I mean, you love the sports. What makes football your greatest passion? Um, I have to say what makes football my greatest passion is, is being able to come out there each and every day, do what you love. I was always taught that you gotta be passionate in what you do. And by football being my first love, I was always passionate and dedicated. And main thing is just going through adversity. You know, uh, it might look easy right now as far as uh, throughout the success, but it was a tough road and a tough journey. And I'm um, just staying dedicated throughout the hard times and the good times is what made me so passionate and dedicated about the game. Well, we wanna get to know the, the road, so <laughs> which, which path brought you to the European League of Football and how, how did it all start? What was your first experience with football? Um, I had to say I was back in Little Rock, Arkansas, my hometown, playing for the West Side Steelers. I was like around five or six years old. And um, believe it or not, I was a little crybaby playing on football back in the day, but it was just like I always knew that I love football, playing sports. My mom made sure, me and my brothers, brother um, stayed active playing sports and things like that. She was a single mom, so she stayed staying on us and stuff like that. But it was definitely good. Um, football became my first love when I was five or six years old. And when did you realize that you are pretty talented and that you can and want to do this on a professional level? Um, it's kind of crazy, but I say I always felt like once I started playing football at the age of five or six years old, my goal was to make it to the NFL or just play big time football. So I always had that in, like, in my dreams, like writing, writing, writing down goals in elementary, like what you want to be. I always said I wanted to be an NFL player and things like that. So I always kind of had that in my mind growing up, and that's what kind of molded me to the player I am today, try to be the best player and um, try to do big things in life. Well, the NFL, of course, is number one, and of course the dream of, of most players. What are you doing to chase this dream, or how do you want to achieve it? Uh, just working out every day, working on my craft, uh, try to be the best player I can be. Staying humble, staying prayed up, control what you can control. And yeah, just making plays. Whenever your num number is called, you got to do spectacular things playing football. So that's why I try to hang my hat on, try to be the best player I can be whenever my number is called and make big time plays. And do you think that the, the European League of Football can help you with that? Oh, most definitely. Um, definitely a great exposure. Um, by it being the first year, you know, you tied in with um, Mr. Um, the Commissioner Zume. He's got um, ties from the play. He used to play in the NFL and things like that. Definitely a great opportunity to elevate your game and put out good film for whatever you want to become as far as NFL or CFL for sure. And did you know that there was a football hype outside the United States before you heard about the European League of Football for the first time? Oh uh, Yes, I did. Um, I didn't know about the ELF, but I knew about like Germany football, um, Canada, things like that. But it's definitely, um, I definitely knew about football outside of the, the U.S. And compared to other programs and league you played for, how would you describe the level of the European League of Football? Even though we are in season one and it was basically built in a very short amount of time. Oh, it's all, I feel like it's all the same. You still got to, it's 11 on 11. You got to be the dude and, and play football and make plays, you know. Um, yeah, so, I mean, everything is 
everything is basically the same. You still got it's just football. It's nothing more, nothing less. And what would you still looking at the European League of Football? What's your outlook for season two? Um, I say I look for season two is um, I have to say the fans. You know, the fans is going to be a big part. Um, hopefully the the COVID uh, protocol things kind of slow down so we can get our full advantage and um, full experience. But um, I'll just say the fans for sure. And um, can you see yourself playing for the European League of Football for another year? And if so, is there anything that you would be doing differently? Yes, I can definitely see myself playing again for the next um, for the next year, um, the second year. And um, I wouldn't do anything differently. Just stay the course, you know, um, continue to be the best player I can be, work out. And um, one thing I will do differently, well, one thing I will do my second year is just be more interactive with the youth around where I live. Okay, and would you say that you reached your goals in season one? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, definitely haven't. There's a lot more to improve. I'm not satisfied uh, throughout the success I have had, but definitely um, yeah, I haven't reached my full potential yet. So what would you say was your biggest challenge this season? Um, my biggest challenge was coming out here, you know, coming and getting out of my comfort zone back in the United States, coming out here to a whole nother environment, whole nother country and doing what you love, you know, um, getting to know the players as well and getting to know like European um, people as well. So that was kind of like my biggest challenge, um, adapting to the environment and the, and the culture here. Was it your first time abroad? First, very first time ever. Never left the States. Um, I always go state to state, but never left the United States. So it was definitely... First time jet lag? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. It was crazy food. when I first got here. <laughs> different language. Yeah. <laughs> so what were you thinking when you arrived? Um, so many wild thoughts. I, th I just thought about like movies. I, what I seen on movies, obviously it wasn't nothing like what I seen on movies, thinking of like, all countries are the same, you know, but um, it was definitely a cool experience just to see how things are here and how people do things here compared to the States, so it was fun. And is it, what would you say, what do you miss the most from home? I say home cooked meals. <laughs> um, I'm from Arkansas, so we kind of make like Southern food and things like that, so like, we call it like soul food, so it's kind of like candy ounce, macaroni, cheese, things like that in that nature. And had, was your family able to visit you over here? Um, actually, my brother, my big brother DeAndre Anderson, um, he came. He came to the Barcelona game. So when we played in Barcelona, he actually came to the Barcelona game in Barcelona. So it was cool to see him. I haven't saw him since I left. Yeah, that must have been great. So what did he say about Europe? And then also Barcelona. It's such a beautiful city. Without this, with, with this league, you were able to discover Europe a little bit as well. What was your impression, and what did you experience? Uh, what I experienced in Europe was um, just being able to walk everywhere. You can be yourself. Um, the breakfast is very different to me. You know, y'all eat a lot of bread, pastries, and things like that. So that was kind of different, but it was a great experience. But my brother, um, he kind of says the same thing. You know, it's a lot of walking. You know, everybody walk, ride bikes, things like that. So it was kind of different for him as well. So let's talk about football again. What, what, what would you say was your best play this season? Has there been a moment that stays in your mind forever? One of my best plays for myself, I would say probably the Barcelona game um, at home in Cologne. Um, one of the big runs, and I still found a guy and um, um, ran into the end zone and things like that. I kind of say that's probably one of my best moments right now. And then, mm, just seeing, being able to see my O-line dominate for me, my O-line, tight ends, wide receivers blocking, and the fullback. So that would probably definitely be my highlight of the moments um, in the games as well, seeing them do what they do to help me succeed. And has there been a player that really surprised and impressed you? On the team? On the team and also on the league? I say everybody on the offense that plays, step in, they play a big part. So they definitely, they didn't surprise me as well as suspected, but they definitely, you know, um, 
proud of those guys. But um, on the opponent team, I say, um, my guy Kyle Kitchens. He's turning it up right now, so I definitely say I won't be surprised because he's a playmaker, but he's definitely raising a lot of eyebrows in the lead and doing great things. And who has been your toughest opponent then? Who was really difficult? Um, I say I say Frankfurt. Frankfurt, they got a good defense. Um, a uh, technical sound up front and things like that. And then another opponent I'll say was Poland, their um, front seven, for sure. So your team, the Cologne Centurions, what advantage do you guys have over the others then? What makes you more dangerous? Mm. Apart from you. <laughs> I say um, our passing game. You know, our passing game is, is kind of under the shell due to our run game, but I feel like our passing game is very elite. We got great players around, great wide receivers that can catch the ball and make big plays down the field. We got a great quarterback. And um, another thing I say is our O-line. Our O-line is what make us good up front. So we definitely got the best O-line in the league for sure. And how would you describe the philosophy of your team? Do you guys get along pretty well? And if so, how important is that in general? Oh, it's definitely important. You know, you got to have team chemistry. Um, in college, we always, our coach, my coach D'Antonio at Michigan State, always said we got to be a player-led team, not a coach-led team. So if you have a player-led team, you'll, you'll, be, you'll do good. Um, you'll make it real far as far as success um, as a team. So I say our, our uh, strongest strength is, is chemistry. You got to have good chemistry, and we got good chemistry on the team, and the friendship is a brotherhood. And has there been one guy you, you or which other teammate did you get along well? Who did you have the most fun with? Uh, I say my O line. You know, I love those guys. I always smile when I see them, dap them up, and things like that. We talk a lot of stuff, but uh, most definitely I say the O line. They get me through practice and get me through, through life being out here. And then when it comes to game day, what's your most favorite part about this day? Just waking up in the morning, first and foremost, thanking God that he's blessing me to wake up this morning and do what I love. And secondly, I just say just the, the energy and the vibe you have when you wake up knowing you got to do something like a big, a big event. So just waking up, seeing the fans, yelling your name, things like that, getting ready, tailgating, stuff like that. And um, People listening, locked in, listening to music is, is a great passion and great experience to have. What kind of music do you listen to then? Uh, I listen to my favorite rapper right now, is Rod Wave. I listen to him a lot. And I kind of listen, I switch it up. I listen to a, a variety of artists, but I, and I also listen to like gospel music to just give me, you know, be more appreciative and just give me off just the, the rap music and just, um, I say, give me more mellow and chill and just thinking more and just think, yeah, thinking more and, and stuff like that. So would you say that this is your ritual when it comes to preparation before the game or do you have also another routine that you go through? Um, it's most definitely a ritual. Um, ritual. Um, then another routine I go through is just, I always got to pray before I hit the field and I talk to myself, you know, just self-motivation and remember where I came from and who I'm doing it for. And uh, what's on your mind right before kickoff? Right before kickoff, just making plays. You know, I'm um, going out there dominating, do what you love. Um, yeah, just making plays, being the best player you can be and trusting myself to know that I'm the best player on the field no matter what. And um, just let my hard work and all my dedication take over it in this moment. And how would you describe your own role within the team? Do you motivate the others or are you a bit, little bit more calm? Oh yeah, I most definitely motivate others. Uh, I kind of do like let my actions do all the talking for the most part, but when necessary, I talk to the players and things like that because that's what they'll want. But uh, I most definitely try to motivate them by just making plays and seeing what I can do and what they can do the same thing. So I kind of motivate, motivate them by just my play, my style of play. And how do you motiv motivate yourself, but also your teammates, for example, when, when you're having 
A, a bad mood or B, a bad first half, for example? How do you stay focused and motivated during halftime? Well, I just keep talking to myself, you know, knowing that everything is not going to go your way. Not just in football, just in life. You always got to be prepared to, it's not how you get hit, it's how you take the hit and come back from it. So I always try to um, just stay positive, stay, um, don't get bigger than the moment. And just knowing that everything happened, happened for a reason. So it's supposed to happen that way. So you just got to approach it in that way and everything will go good. And who do you look, who do you look up to as a player? Do you have any idols or also mentors? And who was the greatest person you worked with? Um, I look up to as a player, rest in peace, the Mamba. Kobe Bryant was my favorite player. Um, I just looked up to him, he, like his, his, um, his mindset. He had this grid that he wanted to be the best no matter what. And it, and it, um, it pissed him off in a way to, to be great. So that's the type of person I try to be. And, um, Throughout all the adversity he went through and things like that, he always wanted to be great and just win championships and be the best player he can ever be. So he's definitely my role model. Um, and work-wise, who was the or like a person you that that stays in your mind that you worked with? Um, who taught would, you a lot? I say my big brother DeAndre. You know, um, my mom being a single parent, he took the role, the big brother role, at an early age and helped me love football even more. So he used to take me when I started working out in the sixth grade, lifting weights, things like that. I'm probably like the only sixth grader back in back at home, lifting weights, heavy, ripped up, going to camps and things like that. He made sure, like I, um, I can just remember, like during these summer summer days, when I'm playing, I wanted to play video games. You know, when you're young, that's all you want to play is video games. He was like, you're not going to the football camp unless you go out there and work out. You, you want to you be something in life, you got to go work for it. So he made sure that I didn't play video games all day. I had to go work out. And um, by football being my first passion and my love, I took that into consideration. I'm like, all right, I got to go to, I want to go to these camps because I'm looking on TV, want to play on the NCAA, be on the NCAA game and things like that. So I took it upon myself to, uh, I need to go work out. So he used to wake me up five o'clock in the morning, working out, running hills and things like that. So he definitely inspired me. He was definitely a big part of my success. Oh yeah, and for sure you are grateful for him because he obviously turned you into the great player that you are today. So what would you say are the top three priorities as a player for, for you? Uh, first, I say you gotta stay prayed up. You know, but believe in whatever you believe in, whoever you believe in, you gotta um, be thankful. Secondly, I say uh, being humble. You know, you gotta be humble through, through the, um, the good and the bad. And then thirdly, I say, just be dedicated. You gotta be dedicated into what, you, what you're doing and have passion about it. And when you are out on the field, how do you wanna be seen by your own team, the opponents, and also by the fans? What kind of attitude do you wanna have? Um, a great attitude, somebody that's very down to earth, nice person to get along with, you can communicate with, a um, person that to wear his heart on his sleeve on the football field, you know, giving it his all, and you're gonna see me give it, give him my all no matter what, good and bad. And what advice would you give a young athlete at the beginning of his career? Uh, the advice I give to a young athlete is stay the course, you know. Um, it's not gonna always be easy, and just gotta stay prayed up, have faith, and have a good surrounding system around you, like people around you that that's going to tell you right from wrong and um, that's going to motivate you to be what you want to be in life. And you're playing with number 28. Is there any reason behind it? Does this number mean anything to you? Oh, most definitely. Um, one of my close friends named Al T. Tenpenny, he, um, had, he passed away um, some, years, some years back, a few years back. Um, he was a five star. Or, yeah, he was like a five star out of, um, out of high school, went to Alabama committed to Alabama. He was um, actually in the class with Derrick Henry, Alvin Kamara, and things like that. But yeah, he's, he passed and he was wearing 28. So I, I dedicate 28 for him. And uh, yeah, that's, that's my guy. And he's clearly watching you. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> so if not football, what else would you have done? Or do you, do you also have plans, maybe anything else that you could be doing after your career? Um, definitely working with the youth. 
Um, I feel like that's a big part where I, where I come from. Um, I was able, I was fortunate enough to go to like Boys and Girls Club community centers and things like that. I feel like nowadays there's not too many Boys and Girls Club and community centers back where I'm from. So I definitely say the youth and um, steer them to the, on the right path and um, let them know that you can, you can succeed, you can succeed and um, do whatever you believe in. So I definitely want to work with the youth and give them my knowledge of what I went through and things like that. Make sure they don't go through the same thing I had to go through. You know, discipline is very important for an athlete, but is there anything that makes you forget your discipline? Like any candy, for example, or any hobby? Uh, I definitely say can't like eat a lot. I eat a lot of junk food. I obviously, probably don't look like it, but I love junk food like candy, chips, juice. I love it all. So definitely, eating junk food would make me forget about like the discipline of football for sure. But well, Madre, thank you very much. It was a great pleasure to get to know you a little bit better. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And shout out to the fans, go Satarians. They hope to have you back in season two, that's for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. In ten games. In nine. In nine. In nine. Over 2,000 yards are allowed. The MVP, and I'm very I'm proud to present it to you, Marvel London from the... Yeah! MVP! 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 MVP!